Peace to you, brothers and sisters. Before we begin our devotion, let us come before our Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus. We thank you that you have given all authority in heaven and on earth, authorities over all flesh to him, the Son of Man, Jesus. You have given him the authority to give eternal life to whom you have chosen. Father, as you have chosen us to be one in Christ, we pray that you will keep us one in him. The COVID pandemic, the recent wildfires, the earthquake in California, and many other natural disaster and man-made evils have reminded us that we are mere sojourners in this world. We have a new home in the new heaven and new earth, where we shall be forever. Father, help us to look past this facade of comfort and security. Help us to look toward the ultimate reality, which we will have in Christ Jesus. Father, keep us one as we are torn by partisan politics in this season. Help us to reason and communicate with love and civility. Help us to use our votes and our voices to love our neighbors as much as we love you. Father, help us today to live and to rest in your love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Amen. Good morning. Uh, I am Pastor Jacob and I'm giving today's uh, devotion uh, from uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, I decided to focus on verses uh, 1 through 2 and particularly um, I want to focus on suffering. Uh, suffering for Christ. And the cool thing about uh, verse 1 is that uh, I, go ahead, I can go ahead and read, let's go ahead and read that for us. So since Christ suffered in the flesh, you also arm yourselves with the same attitude because the one who has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, or in other translations, died to sin, in that he spends the rest of his time on earth concerned about the will of God and not human desires. I just, I just love this because it, 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 it affirms that we're no longer concerned about the things of this world. We're concerned about the things of God. We, we, we love God more than we love our flesh. We love God more than we love the world and ourselves and the, and the things that the world tells us is important. We love him more. And it's through suffering that we can affirm this. You know, if we're suffering truly for him, we're suffering out of love. And um, I want to encourage us today to look at ways that, what can we do to suffer a little bit more for Christ today or tomorrow? Can we maybe suffer a little bit by being generous? Maybe we have a lot of money, but we're, we're stingy. Um, which doesn't always have to be a bad thing. Maybe we don't have a lot of money, and so we're stingy. Um, and so it would really be us suffering to be generous to somebody. Somebody that, like, tipping somebody who's giving you takeout food a really big amount of money to tell them how much God loves them. Um, and maybe it would be just praying for somebody that we really dislike or loving on somebody that has persecuted us or just treated us wrongly, even if we had it coming. Well, we would be suffering because our flesh, it doesn't want to react that way. You know, maybe it's staying up a little later to spend some time with God or waking up a little bit earlier to um, spend time with him or um, to do something nice for somebody. Um, but I encourage you to suffer today and this week for Christ and looking for ways that you can suffer. And I also want to um, highlight um, verses 7 and, and, and 8, which um, Peter is saying that um, the culmin the, for the end of all things is near and how we need to discipline ourselves in prayer and to um, be fervent in our love for one another. And so I think two ways that we can really focus on suffering is looking for ways that we can suffer in prayer, you know, whether it's fasting and, and, and looking for ways that we can suffer in loving others. You know, maybe it's, you know, praying for the in-laws and calling the in-laws or um, uh, 
maybe uh, talking to the parents of, uh, of, of your child's friend who you have a hard time speaking to and, you know, telling them about your church. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I know that God will lead you. I hope that you have a wonderful day today. God bless.